What's going on? This is Kareem from DJBooth.net and I'm here in the lab to give you guys a complete in-depth HD video review of the new Numark NS72 Professional Digital DJ Controller for Serato DJ. So what we have here in a nutshell is the second iteration of the first Numark NS7 that came out a few years ago. It was used with Serato Itch. It had these beautiful motorized platters that actively spin with a real piece of vinyl and a real actual slip mat on there at all times so it really feels really good to anybody who has used turntables or vinyl in the past well this controller one ups that by coming with the full new edition of Serato DJ which is actually a better software more complete software than itch ever was and it also comes with two additional channels of control this is a four channel complete standalone mixer as well as four channel or four deck DJ controller. You still have the same motorized spinning beautiful platters and motors that are found on the NS7 original and the V7 which you can still get today and that's also compatible with Serato DJ by the way. And then you have these intuitive pads that allow you to control things like hot cues, auto rolls, loops, samples and slicer. So you have a lot going on here. It's a really nice device. It's really big, it's really hefty, it's really expensive, but it does a lot of the control that you're not able to do anywhere else. So let's take a closer look at the hardware and see what you get. Okay everyone, so here it is, the Numark NS7 II, which is the successor to the original NS7 Pro, which was debuted a few years ago, came with Serato Itch, but this controller has some of the same bells and whistles such as the ultra high torque direct drive motor and the metal platter along with the actively spinning vinyl and slip mat underneath so you're getting a real true to life vinyl style experience right here on the DJ controller which was similar to the original NS7 and the V7 this controller adds an additional two channels or two decks of mixing you're getting this bundled with the highly powerful Serato DJ full edition software. You also get this new MPC Akai Professional MPC 2000 or MPC 5000 pads pulled directly from the Akai Professional units right here on the face of the NS7 in order to give you guys your cues, your auto rolls, loops, sampler, slicer. We'll get into all of this later on in the review. And you also are getting your full standalone mixer capabilities so you have your four decks of control there and then you also have all of these touch capacitive knobs which means they're sensitive to when you touch them all of the knobs that have this metal top and the rubberized coating around them are all touch sensitive meaning the FX and the EQs and the, the FX filter will all work in a touch capacity we'll get to that later on so you guys can see exactly what we're talking about with the touch controls. But there's a lot more going on here. We'll get into every single feature. And we're going to start off by touching on the build quality. The build quality unit is very solid, very sturdy. You have your metal top. And then you have a metal shroud that covers the whole underneath and sides of the unit. This is this silver color. So you have really rugged, really dependable, durable NS7 II. It's very solid, just as with the original NS7 Pro, which still continues to last year after year, even today. Um, you do have a glass infused type material for the front panel in order to save on some weight. So even though Newmark was able to cram some more features into this unit, into the same size footprint, you're getting the additional pads here, the additional two decks, and a lot more technology. But they were able to save weight a few pounds from the original NS7. But we're not going to get carried away as it's still a very heavy unit. It's still very sizable. It's very big. It's the biggest controller to date that I think I've tested so far. And it's really hard trying to fit one of these into a DJ booth if you're a resident DJ. And it's also maybe equally hard for you to lug this around if you're a mobile style DJ. But on the other end of the spectrum... There are DJs who still bring two turntables in the mixer, such as myself, when they go out to do their gigs, and that is still a much larger footprint than something like this, and it still feels legitimate, and it really feels like you're using a vinyl style setup. So this will appeal to those users, as well as your regular digital DJs that want to try vinyl, perhaps for the first time. 
So setup, setup is fairly easy. Nowadays with software, setup is a lot different than it used to be before. They used to include CDs to give you guys the software, but now you have a slip or a card that comes with your controller and the best thing to do is to go directly to the Newmark website and download the latest drivers. They're gonna ask you to enter your information, uh, register with the site, and also register your device with them. That way you have your warranty, et cetera, et cetera. And you get the updates to any of the firmware that you're gonna to need to run the unit. So you download the firmware, then you can head on over to Serato and download the 1.5 Serato installation. And there's also a 1.6 beta, which is right now available on the Serato DJ forums. If you go and search Google, I'm sure you'll find it. And you can actually apply that 1.6 beta to the Newmark NS7 II. That's what we're testing it with. That's what we're using it with. And that's also what the Newmark engineers recommended we actually use it with. They say it runs even better and even smoother on the 1.6 than it does on 1.5. So we're going to go ahead and start up with the test. And we're going to start off with the mixing console right in the middle of the unit. Again, for the setup, after you download your Serato DJ, you plug it in, you plug in your USB connection to your computer, plug in your RCA or your XLR outputs, plug in your headphones on the front, and then your power on the back. Click on the power switch and you're ready to go. You didn't really have to go into the software and set up any of your parameters. Everything just kind of works plug and play directly out of the box. Okay, so first up we're going to talk about the mixing console. At the bottom we have the crossfader. It's a really nice and smooth, sturdy crossfader. It's the CP Pro, so it's familiar to those who use professional style Newmark mixers in the past. They're the same mixer uh, crossfader that's on the SMX Pro and the DXM Pro. Very nice, very sturdy crossfaders, really fluid, and it really has basically no resistance to it whatsoever. And it's really good for scratching, it has really low cutting distance of about 1 to 1.5 millimeters. So I didn't have any problems in pulling off the scratches that I wanted to when using this fader. You can also set it the curve control to the middle when you do that at about the middle point. That means that the midpoint will be about your loudest volume on each side. When you set it all the way to the longest side to the left, then your, most, your main volume on this deck won't reach its highest potential all the way until it's all the way to the end of the curve. So next up you have your line faders. They have slightly, slightly more resistance to them than the cross fader, but not much. They're still really easy to kind of flick and move really fast. They don't feel as the same quality as the CP Pro using the cross fader, but they do feel like they're going to last and they feel like they're going to work perfectly for your mixing needs. Next up, after the faders, we have your input selector switches. These switches allow you to select the different parameters for each one of your decks. You can have it set to PC as they are now. That means they are all four Serato decks. Next, you can switch each one to mic two, so that mic input on the rear of the unit can now be controlled by this volume control lever or whatever one you set it to. So we'll set number three to mic control. And you can also use the bass, the mids, the trebles, and the gains. You cannot use the filter on your external inputs. This is a software MIDI control filter only. We'll get to that in a second. And then you have your last switch, which is line. You have your four RCA inputs on the rear, inputs on the rear, and whatever you have plugged into the inputs for, this, for those particular channels will correspond to switching that to line, and you'll be able to play your phono decks or your line level RCA decks when you have that switched on, depending on what you have in the back. Next up, you have your Q indicators, which allows you to play things in your headphones that the audience doesn't hear. Uh, the master is different from the Q, and you can select two or three at a time. As long as you press them all down or press them one at a time, you can toggle them, or you can listen to them simultaneously, so that way you can get a good Q situation in the headphone. Next up, you have your filter knobs. Again, these are just software-only filters, but they sound good within Serato DJ. They're really cool, really fun to use. They are oversized, so they're easy to control. You don't have anything around here that's really in your way of them, so they're nice and evenly spaced out. So it's good inclusion to have the filter knobs. I wish they would have worked with your inputs on the rear or with your microphone. They won't, but that's one of my minor gripes. But other than that, they work great for the software and for the touch controls that I'll show you 
in a minute. Next up you have your base, mid, and treble and gain for each one of your lines. That way you can get the perfect sound you need. All of the EQs are full kill EQs by the way. And then you have your LED, 11 LED line level meters for each of your channels and for the master. That way you can accurately get your line levels exactly where you need them. Because when you're using a unit like this and you happen to start mixing in software decks with your microphone, with your different hardware inputs such as a turntable or your CDJs, now you're going to start getting different levels all over the place and this will allow you to reel them in and dial them in and get them just right so that way you don't have any clipping issues with your master output. Next up above the gains we have the FXA and B. You can turn on your FXA or your FXB on each channel individually and you also have a master FX buttons here so you can enact your effects on your master as well. Next up you have your BPM meter. This gives you a visual indicator as your BPM is going whether or not your two tracks will be aligned. You can look at the BPM meter and you'll know immediately whether they are or not. Next up you have your navigation section with an oversized encoder. It's very familiar to anyone who used Newmark uh, products in the past like the V7 and the old NS7. You have the same sort of layout and configuration for navigation. You have a back button, forward button. That way you can go through all of your different navigation needs right here within your software. So for me, I like to go through files a lot of the time. So we'll go through files. Then we can go through music. And we can go to Tupac discography. Everything's in here. All eyes on me. Book one ambitions and then you can just load it by pressing load A or load B and you have your different deck buttons on each side so that way when your deck one is already highlighted you press load A it will load into deck A you press deck B or three it will load into three when you press A and two and four on the opposite side next up we have crates prepare and files that way you can really easily jump through all of the different views of your different navigation through your files next up you have your oversized master volume control knob and an oversized booth volume control knob and then you have a panel view button very good to have this that way you can go through your different panels there is a browsing panel then you have your effects panel that way you can see what effects you have and what's on and off and then you have your sampler panel and the sampler panel allows you to see all your samples on the fly and allows you to load and do other things like change the play style of the sample okay so the front of the NS7 2 is made up of three parts all the way to the left you have the mic 1 input which is a combination input between XLR or the quarter inch you also have a gain knob, a bass, and a treble EQ for it. And there's an on-off switch as well. In the middle, you have your crossfader curve knob, which allows you to adjust the slope of the crossfader. And then you have your channel selector knobs. These switches allow you to select the different side of the crossfader that you want the channel to be on. You can have it on the A side, you can have it on the B side, or you can even turn them off so they are independent of the crossfader control. All the way over to the right you have your headphone section. Here you have a combination of the mini jack and the quarter inch jack so you can plug your headphones in no matter what type of connector you have. Then you have your volume control knob and then you have a split cue on off switch that allows you to toggle between hearing the master in one ear cup and the split cue section in the other ear cup. Then you have a blend knob which allows you to blend between cue and master. Okay so the rear panel of the NS7 II is made up of two parts. All the way to the left here we have the input section all the way to the right is the output section. All the way in the top left corner you have your motor torque switch that allows you to adjust the torque between high, which is switched now, or low, which brings it to more of the torque of a Technique 1200 type range. So these are really high torque motors and some people want them to feel a little less torquey and that's when you hit that switch to low. 
You also have a phono ground post. That's for using your record or vinyl turntables. You're allowed to plug them into channels 1 and 2. As you can see, there's a switch for line or phono level for channels 1 and 2. And then there's RCA channels 3 and 4 to the outside. They're all line level. And you have the 2, 1 and 2 can be phono choices if you so wish. Next is the mic input. That's a combination input. It's a second microphone input. The first was on the front. And you're allowed to assign the mic to input to any one of the four channels on the front face of the mixer. And we'll show you that later. But again, it's another combination input. That means you can use XLR or quarter inch. Then you have the locking USB port all the way to the right. And then to the right of the unit, here we have your outputs. These are the XLR balance outputs, the master RCA, and a booth RCA. You also get your standard power cable for AC in, and then you have a metal toggle power switch all the way to the right. Okay, so next up we'll move on over to the effects controls. And you have the new Serato Isotope effects, which lets you combine three effects per module. This is module A. This is module B, and again, these are all the controls to activate A or B on each individual channel or on the master output. Then here you have your FX1, 2, and 3 buttons that you can press to activate the effect, and then you have your encoder knobs that have an LED indicator that lets you know exactly where that specific uh, effect is in the parameter. Then you also have a beat indicator knob over here all the way to the right that lets you change the different beat of the effect. Same on both sides. So now that we went through all of the different knobs that we have here, again we mentioned that we have the touch sensitive sensors inside of all of the knobs that have the metal top and the rubberized surround to them. So with the touch feature you have the ability to um, turn on and off effects using the touch act feature and you don't have to just touch the top of the knob it could be the side of the knob as well you also have the ability to kill all of your different EQs depending on how you start the touch effect so we'll give you a quick example here when you have touch activated in the first mode this will allow your effects to work in touch <coughs> And in the next mode, when you hit shift and touch lock, now you'll be able to turn on and off your effects by touching, and you'll also be able to fully kill your EQs on that particular deck. Really cool features, really cool and intuitive. On the other side, you have another touch filter roll type effect here. So whenever you start using your filter, you're allowed to also use a looped roll at the same time. So let me show you what I mean here. And if you press shift and filter roll, you get a filter effect. And what the filter effect essentially does is it allows you to adjust both your filter and effect simultaneously. You'll see when I'm pressing or changing the parameter on this filter, I'm also changing the parameter on the effect. So you're getting filter and effect combination in one, whatever's on your first effect module. Or your second effect module as well, if you enact effects on both. So. so you're getting a phaser and a distortion here. Alright, 
so next up we'll move right along to the top corners of the units you see the strip search this allows you to rewind or fast forward the track and you can get all the way back to the beginning nice and easily or to anywhere in the track you're allowed to just jump to very quickly and easily with the strip search next up you have your timing and your beat grid adjustments sometimes when Serato gets your beat grid not as right as you wanted it to be you might want to go in and adjust it on your own and you can just press the adjust key and then you can use the platter in order to accurately adjust where you want that down beat to be and you can also slip it meaning you can move the whole bar as it is and slip the whole entire key of the song so that way you're getting it right in the right beat grid where you want locked in um, you can also set and clear the beat grid when you press shift in these buttons then you also have a manual tap button so you can manually tap the BPM into Serato DJ Next up you have your bleep and reverse function for your platter and also your start and stop time. So we'll just give you a quick example of that. The bleep mode is a good way that you can bleep out curses and remove them from different tracks when you have your song playing and you enact the bleep mode it's almost like a slip mode where it'll let the song play in reverse mon monetarily and as soon as you let go of the bleep the, the song will keep playing where it would have left off. And then you can reverse it as well. Okay, next up, moving along, you have your slip mode, motor off, and your range, your pitch range, and your master tempo. The slip mode, just as we just demonstrated with the bleep, allows you to manipulate hot cues or rolls or loops or anything with the platter and the playhead will still remain where it would have been if you hadn't did no manipulation whatsoever. So quick example. Okay, so that's a quick demonstration of slip mode. You also have motor off mode. When you press the shift key and motor and the slip mode, you get motor off, meaning you can play the music. And you can use this platter now as a jog wheel instead of using it as an actively spinning platter. You can use it to nudge and to slow down the track in minor increments. Next up you have the range button which allows you to switch the pitch range from plus minus 8%, 16% or 50% and then you have an extra long throw pitch range slider here on the bottom of the unit or on the sides all the way to the outsides of the unit. Some people like that, some prefer if they were just the same but I like it like this on the outside. It suits your needs very well. You can ride the pitch nicely and you don't have to worry about hanging up on anything else that's in the way. Uh, it's a very smooth smooth glide type fader and there is no center click but there is a LED indicator to let you know when you're back at zero. There are little arrows here. The indicator arrows will allow you to know when you're using four deck mode where your pitch indicator slider should be where you left off in your other deck. So it's really cool to know right at a glance where your other deck is going to be in relation to where the slider is. All the way at the bottom you have your pitch bend button so you can accurately dial in your pitch just right on each end again. And then you have your deck select buttons where you can select between deck 1 or deck 3 on the left or you can select between deck 2 and deck 4 on the right. Next up we have the platter itself. This again is the actively spinning platter. You have a real piece of 7 inch vinyl on top 
underneath you have your slip mat and you have an adjustment ring here where you can adjust this with an allen key that's supplied and you can actually make this record loose or tight depending on your preference you can also adjust the torque of the motor settings and within Serato you can also adjust the 33 rpm or the 45 rpm feel of the motor the motor again is ultra high torque it's one-to-one -one operation there was never any latency or any issues whatsoever when using all four decks they just feel very nice they feel a almost exactly like a real vinyl turntable this is probably the, as close as you're going to get for anything in the digital dj type realm it's very very good very accurate and it really really feels like a real piece of vinyl or turntable that you're using right here in a small neat package <laughs> Next up, continuing along, we have four or five hot cues per side here. And the reason why you want hot cues here as, as well as your hot cues here is because you can always access your hot cues on the fly, even when you're using one of your other functions such as loops or samplers or slicers. So it's cool that they included these rubberized buttons here for your hot cues. You can drum with them. They still feel good. Maybe not as great as the MPC pads that we're going to get to next, but they do feel good to the touch. You have dual shift keys, and then you have your, your FX filter roll, and then your touch FX on the sides. Next up, you have your sync button. Uh, you hit shift and sync, and that turns sync off. Then you have your Q, and then you have your play and pause button. Um, next up is the MPC Akai pads. Now this is the one of the big news for the NS7 II is the inclusion of these official Akai professional MPC pads. These are the same pads that are taken directly from the world renowned MPC 2000, MP, MPC 5000 and these are the same pads here because Newmark is the sister brand from, for Akai so they're allowed to exchange information and exchange new technologies and old technologies like these great pads that they have here. They have the LED ring underneath that way you know exactly what mode the pads are in. Then you have these parameter buttons that let you change different parameters within the software that correspond to these different functions. You have your cues, your auto roll, your loop, your sampler, and your slicer and when you press them again they function as a different function related to the original function. Okay, the first mode you have your hot cues. And then when you press the button again, you'll be in cue loop mode. Then you have your loop, your auto loops that are predefined by smallest eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, one bar, two, four, sixteen or 8 and 16. So and then when you press it again now you're in the slip type loop mode that is a roll that's my favorite by the way Next up you have your manual loop controls and when you press it again you get another bank of four. Uh, the top buttons are where you can save your loops to or where you can initiate where your loop is. And it's the in and the out. In, out, and out save there. Stop the loop. We can always recall the loop at any point. Then you have your sampler mode where you're allowed to go to the sampler within the software and you can play your samplers. You can't really do much in the way of the way you play the samples or you can't really do much from control from here except for access your different samples and the parameter banks go to the different banks. Um, when you're in the second sample mode, it's uh, velocity sensitive, meaning they will play as loud as you tap them. So, 
So it depends how loud, how loud or how hard you tap it, it will change the volume correspondence in the sampler mode. Next up is Slicer, and the Slicer pretty much slices your song into eight equal parts, depending upon the bar length you have set, and you'll be able to change or remix on the fly these eight bars while still remaining on beat within Slicer mode. The first Slicer mode allows you to... So the first slicer mode will allow you to continue through the song while you're still slicing, while the second slicer mode that we were on at the end allows you to remain within that same 8 bar length while you're slicing it up. The other one continues to go. So you have really cool control over your software here using these cool new pads and they really feel nice and responsive and they really feel the same as what you got on the professional Akai MPC lineup. So in conclusion, the Newmark NS7 II is a really fun controller to use. It's really nice. It's really, really well built. It's strong and it's sturdy. It's big, it's hefty, but it has everything you would want in a controller for Serato DJ. You have these really cool ultra high torque direct drive platters pulled from the original NS7 and the V7. It makes DJing really, really fun. If you never used vinyl before, this is a cool way to check it out for the first time to get familiar with the way that that feels and the different tricks and things that you can do on an actively moving platter. Really nice, really fun, perfectly responsive with the Serato DJ software, and just really cool all around. And speaking of Serato DJ, this actually comes with the full edition of Serato DJ, meaning you don't have to pay any upgrade fees, unless of course you want to download the additional Isotope effects that are available. Those come for a nominal fee, and they'll continuously update the effects uh, throughout the life cycle of Serato DJ and as everything keeps on progressing you'll also get new and cool effects that you can choose to add to your repertoire um, in a pack by pack type basis. So you do get the full Serato DJ, you get all of the functions that's included, you also get these cool new intuitive pads that are pulled directly from the Akai Pro lineup. That means the MPC 2000, MPC 5000. These are those same iconic pads that producers all over the world swear by and they use them right here on the Newmark NS7 II. They have a nice backlit under, under them and they control the software really nicely. All your cues, your auto rolls, your loops, your sampler, and your slicer. Everything is really, really nice. You can use these pads to drum. They're very responsive. They're great. This is exactly what you would want on a DJ controller. Next up, you also get these new touch sensitive knobs and rotary encoders here. This way you can do things like add filters to rolls and you can add filters to effects and you can also kill all of your sound using your EQs. So you have really new and cool ways to control your software that you didn't have before. You also have your standalone mixer functions. You have a full free floating mixer. You don't have to plug this into a computer. As soon as you plug it into a power source, you can use your four RCA inputs on the back. And you can also use your mic input that's on the back and assign it to any one of these four channels. So you can use things like EQs and gain controls in order to get that perfect microphone balance. I remember hearing rumors or things on the internet about the original NS7 that the mic didn't quite work as well as they wanted it to and that should be eliminated here with the new features using mic 1 on the front and the mic 2 on the rear and controllable through your mixer. And also, you also, and part of that mixer, the standalone mix, mixing concept is you get these cool 11 LED line level meters. These will allow you to see and keep track of all of your levels, whether you're using a mixture of Serato DJ on your first couple of channels and live inputs such as CDJs or turntables on your other channels. You'll be able to monitor them and make sure nothing is clipping and everything stays perfect. And you also have your master right here in the middle so you can monitor that as well. On the downside, the size and footprint of the unit is rather large, it's big, it's bulky, but if you want to use things like high torque direct drive actively spinning platters here, and you want everything to be solid and 
really nice and, and really can withstand the rigors and abuses of the DJ, then it's going to be big like this. It's going to be bulky. It's going to be bold. But that is still one of the minor gripes that people are going to have with the unit because if you're a mobile DJ and you want to travel light or if you're a, a person with a residency at a bar or at a club, this might not fit inside of your DJ booth. Also on the downside is the fact that these hardware or that these non-hardware filters only work with the software. They don't work with anything when you plug them into your connections here on the back. So anytime you use anything on the on the rear using the standalone mixer, you won't be able to use your filters. You can only use those within Serato DJ. But other than that, excellent controller. I had the most fun with it. Again, it's probably my favorite controller. It's the most expensive controller, but that's because it packs a big punch and it does a whole, whole lot. So for more on this review, you can head on over to the written review at www.djbooth.net slash DJS. Hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching.